With me is Ross Mann of Cavario. Cavario is a search marketing agency in San Diego, and Russ is here to talk to us today about the evolution of internet marketing. Russ, thanks for joining me today, and can you tell us a little bit about Cavario before we get started? Sure. So Cavario is six years old. Uh, we are the premier provider of search engine marketing and search engine optimization software and services to global 2000 companies. We provide both SEO and SEM uh, to help companies, large companies like Intel, Procter & Gamble, Lenovo, and many others bring qualified consumers to their websites and to, uh, increase their e-commerce, their lead generation, and their brand awareness on Google, uh, Bing, Yahoo, as well as on Facebook, Twitter, and on the global search engines like Baidu, Yandex in Russia, Naver in Korea, and others. We're going to be talking about internet marketing. I think in order to do that, it's important to define what internet marketing is. Can you do that for us? Internet marketing or digital marketing has really evolved over the past uh, 12 to 14 years. I guess I would, I would, I kind of put the um, the origination of some of the original internet marketing around 1996 or 97, which is coincidentally when I was coming out of business school. But I recall right then was when Yahoo was going public, when Amazon was still a year away from going public, uh, when uh, when we were all still using AOL. CompuServe, Netscape Navigator, etc. So that was in the 96 to 97 time frame, which I re remember quite well. Uh, and back then, there was really the idea people wanted a website. They were just starting to think about banner ads, and they were doing a lot of pop-up ads, and there was a lot of email that was going on, a lot of email marketing. If you were a customer of someone, they'd send you a bunch of emails, or they were trying to spam you to get you to become a customer. And that's where digital marketing evolved. And then, uh, and then after that, we started seeing Yahoo providing a directory and folks like AltaVista and others, uh, Excite back in the day, LookSmart, providing search, en uh, search engines to find things. Uh, but it was really GoTo, uh, which then was acquired by Overture, which was then acquired by Yahoo, who created the original pay-per-click model in paid search. And Google followed quickly thereafter. So that was probably around the uh, 2000 time frame. It was really around the time of the bubble and post bubble, post first bubble, that we saw the um, the emergence of the paid search engines. Um, and then it was around the 2005, 2006 time frame that we saw the emergence of the first social media publishers like MySpace originally and um, and a variety of folks so so that came out since then for example uh, Facebook of course and Twitter so when you talk about digital marketing or internet marketing you could be talking about um, building a website you could be talking about um, SEO, the art of ranking on the search engines, on SEM, the, the paid search ads. You could be talking about display ads or what people call you know, banner ads, display ads. You could be talking about email marketing. And now there's, of course, social media. And there's uh, video and, and mobile as well. And some of these categories get a little blurred. I wrote a, uh, a blog uh, about a month ago talking about how you will see banner ads or search ads on a mobile device. And so is that a mobile ad or is that a banner ad or is that a search ad? It's actually both. So one of the things that we've been talking about is that there are different ad unit types that appear on different publisher types that appear on different viewing devices. So you might see a banner ad unit on a, uh, on a search engine publisher on a mobile device, on a on a smartphone, or you might see a um, a video ad unit where the, ad, the the video is the ad. You might see that over uh, or in a social publisher like Facebook or Twitter, and you might see that on your tablet device. So it's very important to consider what is the ad unit you're focused on, what is the uh, publisher type that you're uh, displaying that ad on, and what viewing device is a consumer consuming it through. And if you look at it through that multifaceted prism, that's where you can start thinking about uh, digital marketing across all its various facets and which, which ad unit types, 
which uh, publisher types and which uh, viewing devices are best for you, your company, whether you're a small business or a large global enterprise. You've mentioned several different facets there of internet marketing. Is any one more productive than another? Uh, I don't think you can claim that any one is more more productive than any other. It really depends on your uh, company strategy and your marketing strategy. All of the uh, different media types need to be used together as part of a cross-media optimization. Uh, it's, it's not a coincidence that the word CMO, which generally most people think of as, uh, as chief marketing officer, we use as cross-media optimizer because what does a CMO do? A CMO, a chief marketing officer, wants to optimize their media across all media types. So we think CMOs are CMOing, uh, and that's why we provide a CMO dashboard that's a cross-media optimization dashboard. But what, what, we, what we have found is that certain media types and certain ad units tend to be more top of the funnel or more for branding and awareness and certain media types tend to be more for bottom of the funnel or actual customer acquisition. So you might say that TV ads or video ads or display ads, banner ads, tend to be more top of the funnel. Therefore, awareness, driving awareness of your products or your services. Whereas you start getting into uh, paid search or SEO or email, those tend to be more bottom of the funnel where people are, try are about ready to make a transaction, whether it's buy a laptop or buy a you know, contract for a plumbing service or whatever your, uh, your product or service might be. But again, they need to be used in conjunction. Even within paid search alone or an SEO alone, we often say that there's top of the funnel words and bottom of the funnel words. For example, if someone is, is searching on a for a laptop, they are kind of generally at the beginning stage of research. That's a more of a generic type of phrase versus if someone is searching for a Lenovo PC with an Intel microprocessor from a certain retailer, then they're probably much more in the at the buying part of the funnel. And so we work with our clients to uh, create global campaigns that are cross media that are uh, that are focused on different personas and that have awareness of the marketing funnel to help them achieve their end goals within certain ROI thresholds. Which elements would you say have kind of stood the test of time while others have not? Uh, well, I think most of them have passed, passed the test of time. Uh, they've all evolved, shall we say. I think banner ads or display ads have certainly evolved from just buying premium ads on, on Yahoo or on Martha Stewart or on ESPN to now there's a full range of publishers from the premium publishers to the long tail publishers. There's new ways of buying display, for example, that include um, uh, DSPs and RTBs, uh, which, which enable, uh, enable advertisers to better target to different consumer demographics or psychographics in search for example there have been a, there's been a lot of evolution of hyper local targeting of persona based targeting of uh, new bid rules and algorithms where you'll include uh, search retargeting or or search with paid social for example so it's all evolved I guess if there's anyone that that maybe hasn't stood the test of time you might say that uh, certain 3d virtual reality worlds that were popular a couple of years ago they seem to have had a very short life. Maybe they need a second life if I'm going to have a bad pun. But, um, but, but I do know that some of those, you know, some of those are actually being reborn. And uh, there's some new initiatives around virtual worlds and avatars, etc. So, so I think what we see is none of these, none of these ad types and mediums um, die. They just evolve to where they become highly productive for advertisers. For small businesses looking to maximize internet marketing, what steps are there or what areas should we focus on uh, keeping a small budget in mind? Yeah, I think um, what, what we've seen, whether it's for a large company or for, for a small company, is you, uh, uh, you need to really focus on what your strategic objectives are and your strategic di differentiation with, with your company and your products and services. And if you start from there, that starts to dictate uh, which media types, which ad units, which viewing devices are going to work best for your company. I think uh, we see sometimes certain uh, companies, and it tends to be actually the smaller companies, which is interesting, they get a little amped up around 
oh, we've got to have a Facebook page. We've got to have a Twitter stream. We've got to have a Google Plus page. We've got to be trying this new media type. We've got to have a, 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 a Zinger game, you know. Uh, and you can really disperse your efforts, and you can really uh, waste a lot of time, effort, and money if you try to do all, everything and you try to be all things to all people as opposed to really focusing on what's going to work best for you and you want to be the absolute best of breed. That's why Covario is really focused on search as the core of our business, paid search and SEO. And while, for example, display ads or uh, social or some of these other things are outgrowths, for example, we're getting more and more uh, active around social media because there are really direct linkages between SEO and social and paid search and paid social. We're not doing game development, for example, and we're really not doing a whole lot of banner ad stuff. Uh, we are growing our business as an agency and as a technology provider or from with search and being the absolute best of breed at search. There are other companies that are best of breed at, at display. Um, and as an advertiser or as a small business, it's better to, to really dominate one or two categories and be best at those, I believe, and to know what drives your business than to try to be doing everything just because it's cool or it's interesting or it's new. Actually, one thing one thing I would I would suggest is that uh, for small businesses, if that's uh, uh, more of the audience here, for small businesses and local businesses, one thing we didn't discuss is the role of user generated content and getting uh, getting your customers to review and write about that. That that helps with your SEO, by the way, which is of course we're very focused on. But it also helps with your conversions. If people are reading about about you and your business on Yelp, on Angie's List. On, uh, on other local ratings and reviews, uh, depending what kind of service you know, you're offering or what kind of products you're offering. Maybe it's on City Search or on Zagat if you're a restaurant or an enter entertainment type venue versus a service provider, which is what I was talking about for those, uh, for those other websites. All of those can be great publishers. Again, those are publishers. And so you have to figure out what is the ad unit on those publishers. And then are those publishers being primarily accessed via PC, desktop, mobile, or tablet? And again, maximizing that uh, digital marketing prism or cube, as it were, for your business. So but I wanted to make sure to throw that in. You reminded me that that might be a, an important uh, digital marketing element for your user base in particular, your audience here. You've touched a little bit on this, but what role does social media play, like Twitter, Facebook? What, where does that fall into internet marketing? Social media is is great. We often say we've been quoted as uh, as as saying that social media is both a channel and a panel. Uh, it's a channel for acquisition and a channel for retention, but it's also a panel for analyzing and, and engaging your active and engaged customer base. So I think the one misconception that people have is a lot of advertisers are trying to focus on social media as an acquisition channel, and it can be done. And we've certainly done it for a variety of our clients. We helped one of our clients go from a quarter million dollar a quarter million fans to over four million fans in less than nine months on Facebook. So that was a significant increase in fans that they can now engage with and that's fan acquisition. But what we've actually found is uh, social media is even better at, for current customer engagement servicing, upselling, cross-selling, and then promoting where they then bring their friends in as new customers. But uh, the primary uh, thing that we try to help clients with is engaging those fans and retaining those fans or customers or followers, depending on which, uh, which medium you're talking about. Um, and of course, I, again, in paid search and SEO, the, the general thrust tends to be around acquisition. And so we've become social media acquisition experts as well. But I would suggest for, for most businesses out there, start off with retention and engagement for social media and then graduate up to new acquisition, new customer acquisition through social media. In your opinion, where are we trending with internet marketing? Where are we headed? Where are we going to go? I think where we're trending is that uh, in probably within three years or less, we won't call it internet marketing anymore. It will be basically be marketing uh, because digital marketing has become is becoming ubiquitous. That uh, we've talked today primarily about. Uh, 
ads that the consumer is accessing or being exposed to while on a PC or a tablet or a mobile phone. I can tell you that it was just about two weeks ago, I was going through Chicago airport and in the restrooms there was a mirror, the mirror over the wash basin was actually a digital LCD that went between having an ad and having a mirror where you could, you know, check how you were looking, and uh, and one could only imagine that shortly those mirrors will be enabled with a geolocating device that will enable that that mirror to recognize the cell phone in my pocket and then better target me with ads that are relevant to me. Right, and then also we all know uh, Captivate Network is a great uh, network that focuses on digital out of home. In, uh, for example, in uh, captive LCD, uh, captive LCD screens like the ones you see in elevators and billing elevators, or in Starbucks or in other other um, other public places. And once again, one could imagine that those will be tra uh, those will have ta tagging, tracking, and targeting opportunities there. So as you walk around in your daily life, it's going to become more and more like Minority Report, so that we will no longer consider digital marketing separate from from non-digital marketing, whether it's your IP-enabled TV or the billboard on the side of the road or the, or the device you're looking at in your hand or the screen in the elevator, wherever there's a glowing screen, there will be an ad and those ads will be more and more targeted and we're not going to differentiate anymore between digital or non-digital.